Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for a model, build and tactics review of the Space Marine Primaris Inceptor Squad from the Dark Imperium 8th Edition starter set. These are tactically a very new type of unit for the Space Marines and they are equipped with jump packs but unlike previous jump pack equipped troops, these are not primarily designed as assault troops. These are hit and run and striker flanker troops. So tactically, these are quite new and innovative and very interesting. And of course, fans of the book Starship Troopers will uh, probably look at these guys and think, yes, here we finally have a rendition of the mobile infantry into the game of Warhammer 40,000. What I'm going to do in this review is I'm going to talk to you about the kit, the miniatures, quality, the build, maybe a few build tips. I'll then do some size comparisons against some other models from the Warhammer 40,000 range. Then I'll talk briefly about the points, values and tactics for these models in game. Without further ado, let's have a look at these models and we will start with the Inceptor Sergeant. These are certainly very handsome looking models when they're completed and I think it's also safe to say that they're perhaps a little bit of an acquired taste. When I first saw these, I was a little bit mm, sat on the fence about them as to how much I like them. When I actually then saw them in the flesh, I do admit I changed my opinion and I then really grew to like them. And I think it's safe to say these are great looking models. Quite, they take the design tropes of previous Space Marine Assault Infantry, see with the backpack. They also pull in some design styling from, foot, from 30K backpacks as well. Anyone who's bought any destroyer marines uh, with jump packs from the Horus Heresy Forge World range, they'll probably you'll probably recognise some of the design cues in this backpack. It ha they have the backpacks have these control vanes that help the marine fly through the air. He's equipped with these large bounce boots or shock absorbing boots, of course, as well as making big power jumps. These are supposed to be orbital drop troopers. They drop straight in and fight. The model is depicted as wearing the Mark X Gravis armor. So this is a heavier version of the standard Mark X armor. And he's armed with a pair of assault bolters. This is the Marine Sergeant. The look of these guys, yeah, they look really chunky and heavily armored. They've got the same standard armor as the normal Primaris Marines, but they've got the added bulk of these jump boots or bounce boots. They've got thrusters on the rear of their legs. Of course, they're wearing the backpack. The backpack is completely integrated into the torso of the armor. So it's not just like a backpack. It's, it's, almost, it's actually part of the armor. It's not something they put on separately. They've got these two chunky assault bolters. The assault bolters are basically, I don't know, you could call them snub-nosed heavy bolters or oozy heavy bolters perhaps if there is such a thing but that's very much what they are what happens if you crossbreed a heavy bolt gun with a mac 10 machine pistol perhaps yeah quite intriguing looking guns yeah and they do look really good i really like them i think they're great looking models as much as i like the look of them i like them conceptually as well in terms of what they're what they represent They've got a slight variation on the Primaris helmet. There's a bit more cabling in there and a slightly truncated nose. So it looks a bit more, well, a little bit more spe specialised, a bit different to the standard trooper. Detail's very good. We've got the Pickney rail on these assault bolters, giving them this sort of common theme. We've got these devices here. I don't know what these cylinders are, but there's one of those mounted on the bolt rifle as well. And also the um, phased plasma rifle or the uh, plasma incinerator is uh, there they're officially called and then they've got these gun shields mounted on the front of a weapon now there seems to be these things almost seem to be divisive looks wise as the head of the castellan robot for 40k when that came out so i can see that these are a bit chalk and cheese i don't mind them practical wise well you know perhaps you can imagine it's to protect the front end of a the gun these guys aren't equipped with any close combat weapons so perhaps it allows them to use a front gun shield as a parrying device in close combat and maybe it's for deflecting shots as well anyone who likes james bond and has watched the film um ooh, think it is now you have to correct me ian fleming fans in the comments but actually i think it is octopus is the final showdown between bond and the villain the villain has got a submachine gun with a polycarbonate bulletproof shield on the front of it so yeah it, i think real world things like this have been made so it's not completely outside of what actual technology today does. They've got the standard Imperial Eagle design on the chest plate. Got a few little purity seals and stuff. Nice, you know, good details on the backpacks, several thrusters. What looks a bit like a reactor housing here. 
And this is a design trope we see in the upcoming Redemptor Dreadnought, and it also borrows cues from some 30k Mechanicum units as well. Like these, are, I think they're really great looking models. And it's nice to see something really original, yet for me, really cool as well. You know, if you're gonna add something new to the Marines, these guys are what I like to see. Last time Games Workshop did something really new for the Space Marines with the Centurions, well, for me it was an unmitigated car crash from the looks department wise. Centurions were everything the Space Marines weren't. They were slow, they were heavy, they were clumsy looking. Space Marines are fast moving strike troops more than anything. And these guys, for me, are exactly that. Sorry Centurion fans, but that's just how I feel. So what about the kit? So you get three of these guys in the Dark Imperium box set. They're multi-part models. They are designed, well, semi-posable. On the trooper model, the so there's a sergeant and two troopers. On the trooper model, the arms are actually got this sort of like star shape and triangle fitment that allows you to kind of ratchet the position. However, the right arm is fixed and then the arms are both fixed for the uh, Primaris Sergeant or the Inceptor Sergeant. Now, I've, as you can probably imagine, I've reposed these. So the arms are dead easy to repose. You just have to cut some of the peg away. In the case of a Sergeant, I just had to put the poly cement on, allow it to soften the post, and then I could, uh, it actually melted the post enough that I could repose the arm and raise his hand a bit. So I reposed all mine. The sergeant I lifted his, his aiming hand up a bit. This guy, I raised both of his arms up. So he's looking more down the barrel now and he's not pointing at the ground, ground quite so much. Uh, and on this guy, I raised both of his arms up a bit. So these guys have got more posability to them than the Intercessor Squad Marines that I showed in my, my first review. But that said, when you're looking at the legs, you would have to start doing some major work on those if you wanted to repose the legs. Although arguably the arms are the main things. And do some nice poses. I wanna draw attention to this guy. And this is actually a little bit of a tribute pose. And let me show you what the tribute is. So this is actually, to, to show you this tribute, we've gotta go all the way back to the original Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader book. And if I leaf through to where I put a bookmark, you'll see that there was this picture of these jetpack equipped Space Marines. And this guy here in particular, well, both of them with these big jump packs, but this guy here in particular with these enormous hand cannons. When I saw these Inceptor Marines, these huge hand cannons, I really thought of that. And this guy is like my tribute pose to that old 40K picture from Rogue Trader. Yeah, great stuff. Great, great nostalgia. Right, let's talk about the actual build. So as I say, these are multi-part models. They go together very well. One thing I will draw your attention to though, I think there was an awful lot of cleanup required on two of these models. The Intercessor Squad that I built yesterday, which is Intercessor Squad A, had very little in the way of mold lines. They were a lot like the Custodian Guard I'd built from the Prospero box. However, two of these troopers had an awful lot of cleanup required. And I, in terms of mold lines, I mean, everything, nothing was misaligned. Every, you know, all the parts are correctly formed, but there was much more in the way of mold lines to remove. Looking at this, the two troopers I'm talking about, I'll just move these guys to one side for a moment. The two troopers which had a lot of cleanup came from these sprues, and this is sprue B, yeah? The guy who didn't require much cleanup was from this sprue, which is sprue A. Now, I compared these two, and I think these have been made by different manufacturers. Well, you can see quite clearly that there's different machining on each, on the surface of each sprue. This is very smooth, whereas this, you can see all these patterns, and these, what these are, these are patterns on the, on the mold face, and the machining tool that's made this, this particular mold. And you can see the gates look a bit different as well. This one, look, this has got taller, I don't know, it just looked a bit different and I just, it just made me wonder whether or not there's two different manufacturers who have made these. One of whom, this guy, this sprue, and also the original sprue F, which has got the intercessor marines on, have been made by one manufacturer and these sprue Bs have been made by another. And yeah, there's a lot more cleanup to do. If you're wanting to get rid of all your mold lines, there is a lot more cleanup to do on these. And to be honest, I'm not really looking forward to doing these plasma incinerators, which are gonna be, to coin a phrase, these are gonna be a pain in the ass to get those mold lines off. 
particularly running down those uh, plasma coils and across the Pitkiny rails. So that's a little bit of a shame that, and it's a pity that the whole kit hasn't been made to the same standard as Sprue F and Sprue A because they're definitely better. Mold lines are much less prominent, not there at all, than what we had on Sprue B. Yeah, there was a lot of cleanup that was required on these guys, and these three took me longer to build than the five intercessors as a result. Other points on building, I mean, I built these like the intercessors with polystyrene cement. That's by far the best way to put these plastic models together. It's more effective than super glue on plastic. I did the same thing I did with my intercessors. I've bored out the barrels on all of the assault bolters. They look really neat, if I don't say so myself. Again, you've got nice big chunky barrels. These guys are great candidates for barrels barrel boring. In terms of drill bits that I used, the muzzle brake I bored out with this guy, which was the same, actually the same drill bit I used to do the bore of the bolt rifle. So that's one, I think that's about just over a millimeter. And then I used this slightly wider one, which is probably, let's compare them. That's well, probably maybe 1.2 millimeters, maybe 1.3. And I use this to do the bore as well. I had to be quite careful because this is sort of starting to push it with the thickness and I did get a couple of little sprains on the barrels. Nothing serious, you probably won't see them, but I don't think I would have gone any wider than that. I think I could have actually damaged the barrels going wider than that. And the final thing, I guess, build-wise is the stands. Now these stands, they attach very firmly and strongly to the base with this nice flat contact point. But then you've got this kind of like U-shaped attachment point that attaches on to the backpack. So I've stuck these with poly cement only at the moment. I've not pinned it and I'm going to see if they're strong enough because I really want to keep these clear. So when it comes to painting, I'll mask these off, paint it, and then I'll strip the mask away at the end. But I don't know if that's going to be strong enough. So we'll see. If it breaks, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to cut them. I'm going to have to pin it through and then paint this in a probably black or blue, depending. So a couple of thoughts there around the construction, but as I say, they go together very well, just like the other Primaris Marines I've built. So let's now move on to some size comparisons. Well, I think really we've got to start with one of their new brethren. So here we have a Primaris Intercessor Space Marine armed with his bolt rifle. Yeah, so obviously it looks smaller, but then again, these guys are jetting. If we actually put them side by side, then I think they've been scaled rather well, pretty much the same size. Just these guys look bigger on account of their jump boots or bounce boots and the additional armor layer on their pauldrons and then of course a heavy armored cowl around the head and these enormous backpacks bulk them out a lot but otherwise they're very well scaled on one another and you can see the arm van braces have got an additional layer of armor so the whole thing is more heavily armored and that's the gravis armor and it well it doesn't improve their saving throw it does make them tougher at resisting damage. So there's a Primaris Marine. Let's compare against a normal human. I don't have much in the way of 40K humans. Got loads of 30K ones though. Here we've got the grenade launcher Velotaris Veteran, a slightly bendy sword. That's gonna leave bending back. Knew there were gonna be a problem. Mm. Yep, towering. These guys look massive. <laughs> the, the massive side on side and then put them actually on the field and uh, almost looking by comparison. And then if we bring on a standard Adeptus Astarte, so that's a Mark V Forge Walled Heresy Armour Marine. It looks a bit bigger, but the Inceptors are still significantly taller. There you go, give you an idea for the size. Probably got about a head on the other guys. Maybe give or take. Okay, let's now bring in a Terminator. Terminator are probably the nearest direct comparators in the Marine Arsenal. Centurions are probably a bit on the big side. So this is a Gorgon Terminator from the 30K line, armed with a power fist and a graviton gun. They look taller than this dude. I mean, I guess yeah. these guys got the bounce boots on, so it's a bit tricky to do a direct comparison. But yeah, they're still taller than the Terminator. These guys are taller than Intercessor Primaris for two reasons, the bounce boots and then the armored cowl and jump pack. It does make them tower somewhat more. Let's now move on to a slightly larger comparison. Let's square off against a Contempt Dreadnought. So this is a Relic Contempt with a pair of Dreadnought close combat weapons. Even with the jetting bases, they're probably only about the same height as a Contemptor. So that gives you a feel for how they compare against a larger 
unit. I guess as these are jump troops, it'd be nice to do a comparison against flying units. Unfortunately, I don't have much in the way of flyers. I'm not a big flyer person for 40k. But you'll be pleased to know I have got a servo skull. There you go. Oh, or cyber ocularis do if you're a heresy era player. Okay, I'm being silly. I'm just doing this in jest. Um, that's not really a size comparison. No, um, I don't actually have much. The one thing I have got is this scary dude, the Volterax Stratos Automata from the Heresy range. Amazing looking thing. Disturbing and amazing looking thing. Anyone who's just got the Dark Imperium box set and is new to 40k and you're playing Death Guard, I'm sure you'll be enjoying your feated Blight drones. Well, this is a Horus Heresy Great Crusade era robot from the Mechanicum and it's clearly a precursor of the sort of machinery that then got turned into a Blight drone. Well, there is a link there, you see? You see what I did there? A pretty dwarfed by the Volterax. It's a big thing. You could certainly imagine them taking on something like a Volterax, although we don't yet know if the Voltrax exist in 40k yet. Perhaps when they get the Fires of Cyraxus Forge World book, which is going to introduce Battle Automata into 40k, we might get this thing as well. So that's the nearest I've got to a flying unit for a comparison, or a jump unit. I don't have jump pack infantry in my Iron Hands because Iron Hands, well, 30k, they don't really make very good assault troops. There you go, so some size comparisons. Right, now let's finally move on to a brief discussion of tactics. So at this stage, I've not yet played these. I've only had this game a couple of days. Everyone's still in my sort of gaming circle are still getting their troops mustered to play some eighth edition and people are busy as well. I'm gonna have a quick chat through the tactics now. Fortunately, the packing Gretchen at, at Games Workshop have been um, shot and new ones brought in and I finally got my copy of Index Imperium book one, which I'd actually like to say for a 15 quid bug is a stonkingly thick tomb with loads of information in it. So yeah, GW, good value. Put the Forge World offering to shame because this is three times as many pages as a Forge World book. I'm gonna digress on that. So what's the stat line for the Inceptor squad? So their movement 10, weapon and ballistic skill three, strength is four, toughness is five, wounds is two, attacks is two, leadership seven, and saving throw is three plus. And the squad contains two Inceptors and one Inceptor Sergeant. Its power level is eight, and it is a fast attack choice. The Sergeant gets an extra attack and an extra point of leadership. So attack three, leadership eight. Armament wise, very simple. They have two assault bolters. Special rules they have, and they shall know no fear, and Space Marine chapter rules. Their other ability is heavy jump packs. So if they charge, they can basically body slam targets. Um, if you make a, if you complete a charge move within an inch of an enemy, or D6, on a six, that unit suffers a mortal wound. That replaces what used to be Hammer of Wrath. And then their other special ability is Meteoric Descent. And basically, you can play them out of reserves, and at the end of your movement phase, you can set them up anywhere on the table, as long as they are at least nine inches away from the enemy. And their weapon is the Assault Bolter. Very simple, range 18, Assault 3, Strength 5, AP is minus one, and damage is one. So each Marine has six shots with their Assault Bolter, so these guys are absolutely packing, I think. And in this squad of nine, you've got 18 shots. These guys would outgun a Devastator squad with a similar armament. Tactically, how might you go about using these guys? Well, they're, as I said before, they're, they're kind of something quite new to the Marine Force, and they are true sort of flanking hit-and-run raiders, and you would imagine these guys in their suits of Gravis armor marauding around the battlefield, bring heavy firepower with their assault bolters, and then when the opportunity presents, they'll strike in for the assault to really drive it home. And then as quickly as that happens, you would aim, you know, you might then, well, fade away again and then attack again. So, yeah, they're not hand-to-hand -hand troops in the first instance. They're ranged harassers, flankers, and striking troops. And with their stat line, I think they'll be very effective at that. The Gravis armor pushes their toughness up to five, so they've got an extra degree of resilience against damage. You know, and two wounds is gonna keep them in the fight longer. Jump packs and flyability allows them to traverse terrain a lot. They can obviously exploit cover easily as well to push their saving throw up to a two plus. So that's another good tactic. And then of course you can uh, deep strike them in as well. So pretty versatile unit. And the other key thing I think to getting most out of these guys is exploiting the fact that they're equipped with assault weapons. So that means you can keep advancing all the time and have pretty much all your firepower. 
So you've got a standard move of 10 plus D6 inches. So on average, you're gonna move 13 stroke 14 inches per turn. So these are fast moving as well with heavy firepower. And those assault bolters, I think, allow you to threaten light and medium armor as well. Because with a strength five weapon, as long as your target isn't at toughness 10, and I've yet, I've yet to see a toughness 10 unit, okay, I've only got a couple of indices, um, but certainly even in the forge wall indices, the Fellblade super heavy tank and the Cerberus super heavy tank were only toughness nine, so you'd still be damaging on a five. So you can still wear the wounds off even the bigger heavy vehicles with these guys, and um, couple them up with standard marines or intercessor squads, hell blaster squads, phase plasma rifle squads, as I prefer to call them, you know, uh, definitely, they'll definitely keep your opponents on the toes and uh, are something new to the Marine Force. You've got the flexibility of fast moving Marines and the ability to get into cover without the size limitations of things like bikes and speeders. But yeah, so that's, that's just thoughts on tactics. I've not played these yet, so those are just some ideas. If you've got any interesting suggestions and concepts, um, you know, you do share those. Right, points value. So in the mini decks that comes with Dark Imperium, an Inceptor squad is made up of three troops at 39 points per model. It costs 39 points, and then you have two Assault Bolters at seven points per gun. These work out 159 points for three. Quite a lot more points than the Intercessor squad, which is five Marines for 120 points, if I remember rightly. In the actual, shall I say, official main army list, the Index Imperium, the position is a little bit different. An Inceptor squad is 45 points per model. And then on top of that, you've got an Assault Bolter at 15 points per weapon. In Index Imperium 1, these work out 225 points for three troopers. So yeah, quite a lot more points than the Tessessor squad, which is 100 points for five guys. But then you're getting all that mobility, tougher troops, and a heck of a lot of firepower as well. You get what you pay for. I think that rounds out everything I wanted to say about the Primaris Marine Inceptor Squad. Yeah, a great looking unit, a new Space Marine concept done well. I really like them. The only downer with these was, as I say, the amount of cleanup that was required on the two trooper models. It was a shame that there was so much to do and it did take quite a long time. Let me know what your thoughts are about the Inceptor Squad. What do you think of these guys? Be interested to hear as always. All that leaves me to say is I'll catch you on the bounce. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.